this is Jeff Jensen with Go Engineers Tech Support. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Pack and Go to create copies of drawings and assemblies and maintain their file references. In this example, though, I'm only going to do draw, uh, assemblies, but this will apply to drawings as well. So to access Pack and Go, just go to the File drop down menu and click on Pack and Go. That will bring up the Pack and Go window. So starting at the top left, we'll quickly review over everything here, then I'll go into more detailed steps on how to create a copy of this assembly, and I will do it two ways. One, to create a rev of the existing assembly and all its part files, and I will also create a copy of the existing of the new rev uh, to base a whole new project off of. So we'll copy those to a whole new folder structure. Uh, so. Uh, some options in Pack and Go are including drawings and simulation results and toolbox components. And I will come back over in more detail with the uh, save to name and save to folder when I'm actually doing the Pack and Go. Um, so you'll see some statistics here basically uh, underneath the list of files, uh, just how many assemblies and parts and, and drawings and other detail there. Uh, you can also use the select replace, which I will come back and show in more detail to uh, to select uh, to help control items that are selected or, or unselected, and to replace text. Um, so, so most often, uh, really, you just need to send uh, your either drawing or assembly to a vendor or a client, and you could either do just save it to a folder, and, and then you know if you're just going to share that in house, you might just do that where you're just going to uh, copy that folder to a network or something like that to send off somebody to be able to open up the project that they don't normally have access to, or if it's just located on your local computer. Optionally, too, you can do the save to zip file option, and this will actually save everything to a single zip file that you can easily attach to an email and send off. Uh, some other options here are adding a prefix or a suffix to all your files. Uh, this comes in handy if you want to just create a new rev um, or, or just distinguish these copied files from the existing ones. And that's great if you want to be able to open both those up at once um, and not get cross references with uh, file references. Um, so one option here we're going to uncheck to do our copy of our rev and for the new project. Uh, this is when you check this, it just flattens everything out that you're going to save to to a single folder. So when this is checked, you're just going to save everything to the same folder. A lot of times you might want to maintain the folder structure, so you'd want to uncheck that. Uh, the one thing with this, though, um, it it kind of maintains the folder structure, but it always puts it in underneath the folder that you're putting it into. So it's kind of not exactly what we want here, and that's where we're going to use the select replace to fix that and get what we want. Um, so in here, uh, we'll start off uh, actually just fixing that here. Uh, so you can do these one at a time. If you just double click on a row, you can come in and, and browse for just a folder you want to place that in. So if we want to just go back to project A, say OK, and that will update that. But we don't want to have to do that for all of these. And that's where the select replace comes in. So to do this, I'm actually going to select this so I can copy this path because I'm going to use it as the search criteria. Uh, so if we come in here, and there's a, a different options you can search for, so all the columns basically in here. Uh, so we're going to do the Save To folder, and uh, we're going to search for our path there. And we really don't want to, when we, we're going to do the replace text, and we don't want to replace at all. We just want to get rid of the double entry there. So we'll just back up, up to Project A. In project A, we're going to replace, we're going to basically delete the double entry of the default folder structure. So now we're basically just searching for the double entry of the directory path to project A and replacing it with a single one. So once we do that, you can come in and look here and see that uh, the one that we did by hand is, is still correct there, and the rest of these are going to go into the project A folder. And the parts will go in the parts folder, and the sub-assemblies will go in the assemblies folder. 
We also want to change uh, initial release to Rev A since we're creating a Rev of our drawing. So you again, you select replace in this case. So we can just do the save to name. And we want to search for initial release. We want to replace that with Rev A. And go ahead and replace all, click close, and we'll see that those have all been renamed. So we know what the files are going to be named and we know where we're saving them. So we can go ahead and click OK. But before I do, I want to cover one more thing in the select replace. Um, if you want to help, uh, if you want to check certain items that meet search criteria, that's what you could use the check items and unchecked items for. So say you, you know, you didn't want to include uh, any files with a certain name or a save to location or size or type. This would be an easy way to uncheck those specific ones. Uh, so, so we can go ahead and save our new rev here. And when that finishes up, we'll just go file open, kind of see these new files it created. So it created the Rev A of our project, and it also created those Rev A parts in the parts folder, in the subassembly, in the assemblies folder. And that takes care of that. So we could open that up now and have both the Rev A and the initial release open at the same time. So if you want to compare those, that's nice, and you maintain that original initial release. Uh, so you can also use Pack and Go to create a whole new project based off existing ones. And so now that's what we're going to do with Rev A. We're going to create a project B and change it to initial release. So if we go file, Pack and Go, and here we want to first change the save to name. And again, we'll just revert back from the Rev underscore A and we'll replace that with initial release. Go ahead and replace all those. And we also probably didn't really need to close that, but the save to folder, um, we actually want to, I'm going to create our project B folder first. So everything's going to go to project B and we don't want to flatten out to that folder. We want to maintain our folder structure. Uh, so now here we just need to correct the directory path to what we want. So we'll go select replace, save to folder. So we want to search for the double entry of the uh, directory path to the top folder and we want to replace it with a single entry. So we'll back up, project B. Close and we'll double check our directory paths here. They're all going to project B and into the parts folder and this assemblies folder for the sub assembly. So we can go ahead and click save. And now this project B should be located there if we want to open it up. So if we just back up, whoops, select project B, and we have our food process processor initial release there, its parts, and its assemblies. But at least Pack and Go shows you uh, a demonstration there on how to quickly copy projects or an assembly or its drawings and maintain those file references and and to create new revs or new projects hope you enjoyed watching this video and again this is jeff with go engineers tech support thanks mm -hmm.